We're going to go over to the standard table. We have Brennan DeCandio versus Craig Kremples. Craig is on Jess Sky Aggro. This is a lot. It sounds flashy. It is a take on mono red. Well, none of these cards have flash. Yeah. It's got Path of Metal as a, as a light white splash. And then it has some negates in the sideboard. Ooh. So, Spiral of Canal, Kevin Jones. Look at this board state. Yeah. He could have been one of these players. Either. Either of them. They're both in the undefeated table. Don't tell me you can't cast Spiral of Canal. Right. Decandio makes Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Has to use an Aether Hub to do it. Now, with Decandio side, it is Grixis Energy. This is... A little bit different little than the different, stock yeah. build. He's caught a couple Scarab Gods, and he's playing four copies of Rekindling Phoenix. He's been very big on this card. So this is, makes it way more mid-ranging of a deck. So I'm assuming we can't have... Well, I was going to say we can't have a big stack of Rascal's Contempts, but it looks like Brennan... Yeah, why not? Yep. Yeah, he's still doing that, and kind of the idea is you tax your opponent's Frasca's Contempts in the mirror more by having Phoenix. And he actually has more Glorybringers than Scarab Gods, which is uncommon in these builds. And uh, yeah. I asked him about it, and he said, Glorybringer has haste. Nothing more to say. All right. Craig, on the draw, has a turn to carry Zev. Brennan going to attack with Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Two energy waiting to convert. We'll see if they do. So we go back over to Kremples. Harness Lightning will shoot down the pirate before attackers. Looks like Craig has another copy, so that'll be fine. He's going to cast Path of Metal. Path of Metal. We're going to look at that one as well. This card's got a weird text box. So when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to every creature that does not have First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, or Haste. So the red-white abilities. Yep. Okay. And then when you attack with at least two creatures that have any of those abilities, it transforms. Okay, so we the first part's done. It took care of Glimsley Siphoner. That was pretty neat. And it's only just warming up. Yeah, Daring Buccaneer, I believe the follow-up here. Is that right? Get a look at that in a sec. I believe that's the from case. Brennan. So when it's a rigging runner, apologies. No raid trigger. Lowly one one. Right. Bomat courier. So if Kremples so, is able to attack with both of these creatures, that will transform the Path of Metal. Right, Ringing Runner has First Strike and Bomat Courier has Haste. Those were on our, on our, among the options. Brennan's going to cycle. He doesn't want Path of Metal to transform. Oh, wow. And it looks like Brennan has an Essence Scatter in hand. Oh, he's gonna he does essence. not counter the Bomat Courier. Or maybe the Bomat Courier still the stack. Yeah, there we go. Essence Scatter is going to take care of Bomat Courier. hate to counter that one, yeah. But uh, Path of Metal transforms into quite the powerful card. Yeah, so it becomes Metzali Tower of Triumph. It taps for any color. It has the ability to deal two damage to each opponent, or it can randomly destroy an attacker. That one used quite a bit less often, but that first mode there, yeah. that's just a better Ramunap ruins. So here's Kerry Zev. And the Scarab God is the play from Brennan. Yeah, so Krempel's really only has the line of attacking into the Scarab God and hoping he can deal enough damage fast enough yeah. to not lose. Both his pirate, both his cards have first strike, so he will get to transform Path of Metal into Metzali. Mm -hmm. Get a few points of damage in, too. And Hazaret. Okay, three ways to trigger. And one last card. Let's get them all on the table. Here is the Fanatical Firebrand. They are all swinging. Path of Metal easily going to trigger here into Metzali. So he's got the transformed version. Card transforms. Okay, now you can check it off. Too late. It's already checked. Yeah. Check it twice. I mean, you can do that. <laughs> Brennan's hand looks to be two lands, just Mountain and Aether Hub. He is at 19, though, and is going to get to untap with the Scarab Gods. So there's a lot to like. Presumably he blocks something that's not Hazaret and tries to figure it out yeah. from there. Black Fanatical Firebrand, so five of Hazaret, six from Karizev, eight after Raghavan, and nine after Rigging Runner. So it looks like Brennan will drop to ten here and get the transform transformation. Nearly half the life total. Yeah. And from ten against that tower. Yeah. It's going to be a rough go. Well, he's, I think he'll have to just race back with Scarab God, right? You know, he can't. I don't know if he can stabilize anymore because of Metzali. Right. But Scarab God is a 5-5, five five and it brings some reasonable creatures with it. 
With the mana set up here, Crimples every turn can discard card to Hazaret to deal two damage and, and activate the tower. So just four per turn? Yep. Yeah, that that by itself is a three-turn clock, and I bet he can find two more damage in the meantime. It's probably a two-turn clock from Crimples. Right. Yeah, the Hazaret's going to keep attacking. Brenz draws Rekindled Phoenix, Rekindling Phoenix. However, he can't use Scarab God and the Phoenix in the same turn, so he's still really stuck on one thing to do. Mm -hmm. There's not really a great creature he can bring back with the Scarab God right now. A fanatical Firebrand. Well, I do like that because it has haste. So if he's trying to counter race, maybe on the following turn he can bring it back and get enough damage across. Sure. Yeah, casting the Phoenix here would be fine. He could jump in front of the Hazret and he would still come back with haste on Decandio's following turn. I it guess if he swings for five, puts Craig to, to 13, makes that block, the Phoenix will come back four, five haste. Former haste. It is technically 13 damage. Yeah, Decandio is just going to hang back yeah. and try to block, though. Worth noting that if Decandio did try to make a race... The Metzali would get him. Right. It yeah. can uh, hit an attacking creature. A, a random a attacking random creature. random one. I like, I like that. They're all four power or more, so yeah. no, no bad hits there. Here's a swing from Kremples. Brand's going to have to use the Scarab God. It's going to bring back... Look at the graveyard. Uh, looks like Fanatical Firebrand. That may be his only. He has that or Glint Sleeve Siphoner as his choices. Yeah, you can put that in front of the Hazaret and use the Firebrand to hit the Ragavan and save yourself two life that way. So, yeah, that looks like what he's doing. Blocks here. So rigging runner will die in combat. It's both embalmed and eternal. <laughs> it's everything. It's actually neither of those things. Yeah, it's actually neither. <laughs> it's, yeah. Shoots down Ragavan. You mentioned it. So one damage comes across Brennan at nine. But you mentioned Craig does have four damage just in waiting. Mm -hmm. So Brennan has next. He's just going to take a draw. And if Kremples could just sneak in one more damage on the following turn, then he has lethal with those four activations, the two Hazarets. Yeah, and with four, he has well, what's going to feel like four attackers because of the menace that Kerry Zev gives. Right. If Brennan plays out his hand, he drew a Glint Save Siphoner. That and Phoenix means at least one damage will get through on the attack, and Brennan will, will die on the next attack. Yeah. I don't know that he has a way around it. Right. Yeah, the reason you don't see Brennan going for a scare back activation and scrying is because the spell he really wants to draw is Vraska's Contempt. Yeah, so he's going to play out the Phoenix, and then he can play out the blocker. The issue I have here is that Brennan has no cards in hand and is dead on board, and Craig's not going to miss that. The plays just attack with everything. It's this or concede. Okay. Discards the land, so Brennan down to seven, Brennan down to five. Watch this again. He's going to run it back. It's going to work. Maybe add a haste creature. And it's just, 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 just attack. Attack with everything, and you got him. Crazy to think about it, though. He'd be tapped out. He has no cards. It's going to be a tough one. Going to give it a big, long think. So you can double check that it's lethal. It yeah. totally makes sense. You don't want it to not be lethal. Craig actually passed. We sh we'll confirm life totals here. That probably also wins, to be fair. True. Maybe he drew a lightning strike in his slow rolling, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's the uh, attack with the Phoenix. Those are life totals. Yeah, okay, the Phoenix will swing in. Craig down to 14. Kremples could tower it down, but uh, that's not worth as much as damage. Uh, yes, maybe. So maybe Craig misses a lethal here, but it, this, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and it's, this is the kind of miss where it's like... Clearly has it in two turns here. He yeah, has yeah, I don't think it's... There's, it's not a problem. I mean, I guess if Brennan draws Vraska's Contempt, we have to worry about that might matter. So he shot Brennan down to three... He'll say go. 
if Brennan taps mana to use Scarab God, he's going to shoot him. Yep. Magic looks like the card picked up last turn was Shock. And it looks like upkeep now. Craig's going to go ahead and go for the win. A little fancy of a way to go about this, but that it, it should still work. Let's actually not enough keeps and let him draw. Glorybringer, Torrential Gear Hulk are the cards in Brennan's hand. Those don't really play here. Nope. Swing, Craig down to 10. Brennan, I believe, will confirm that he is down to... Okay, he's down to three now. I think we had we had Brennan off by two life points, so shoot okay. him to one and off to activate. So that, that that's going to explain it a little more. That would make a lot more sense. So game one goes to Craig Kremples, Jeskai Aggro. So we're going to talk about just exactly what Jeskai means, because we saw the white. We didn't really see any blue. We'll get back to that in just a second after this break. So Craig Kremples and Brennan DeCanio are going to side up board up here for game number two. Jeskai Aggro. So we have some negates in the sideboard on Craig's side. Yes, we do. Uh, I think eight total blue sources in the main. You have those canals and some ether hubs. And the rest of the sideboard, some Chandra's Defeats, a couple Chandra Torch Defiance, two Glorybringer, two Scavenger Grounds, another Carry Zev, three of Braid. Seems like the matchup where Craig pretty firmly wants to take the aggressive role here. I like the extra carry Zev and matchups where you figure it's going to die and you want to be aggressive. That one's quite good. Chandra Torture Deviance demands pretty specific answers, so I do like that a good amount there. Negate is fine. I think that you really want the negates particularly to deal with approach from the second sun. You don't care as much about a matchup like this. Maybe you bring okay. in one negate for Vraska's Contempts, but obviously it doesn't counter the Scarab God or some of the other problematic creatures out of the Candio's deck, Torrential Gear Hulk. Now, because Craig's deck has some low-end spells like Shocks and Lightning Strikes, do you like this Dire Fleet Daredevil from Brennan, or is that just two? I mean, a two-one first strike for two is not bad. Yeah, the first strike on its own. Sometimes this card is probably fine to cast and turn two in a matchup like this. If Craig has fired off a Lightning Strike, then the Daredevil starts to get really good. So some news from the other boards. While Craig picked up his first win, his teammates were not as fortunate. Both Tan and Grace, and Caleb Durward won their mat their game ones. Bowmat Curry are going to start out from Craig Kremples. Hastes on in for one. Puts a card under it. We go back. It looks like the Candio has picked up that Daredevil. Sure. Yeah, here is, and there is the card. Not even cast anything. It's just a blocker. It's but fine enough. Gets in front of Bowmat Courier. And, it's, and this puts some pressure, right? Did Craig even leave in shocks? They're not particularly good here. Yeah. Looks like he might have Chandra's defeat. That's a That's nice one yeah. when you expect glory bringers, in particular against Decandio's build. Yeah. Swings in for another one, gets a second card, and will cast, looks like, Rigging runner. So now it's a 2 2 thanks to the raid from Bomat Courier. Yep, a little better this game than last. And it's interesting how Mono Red, which Craig really his decks a, a form of Mono Red here, <laughs> is still staying so good while at the same time, really, he's picked up a completely different creature base. And a hiccup on Brennan's side. He misses land number three, just says go. Now we'll see how much quick removal he has. Craig goes to attacks, Brennan shoots down the courier, but he'll take two off Rigging Runner. And Krimples has picked up a Path of Metal. We'll see if he wants to cast that. Yeah. Here's Carry Zev. If you don't have a Haste creature, it makes sense to get something else on the battlefield first. Boom, Spire Bluff Canal picked up from Brennan. Looks like he'll get to play. Only one miss so far. Whirler Virtuoso is ready. But now, because he has a First Striker and, well, two First Striking Pirates, Craig will get to flip that Path of Metal. And that is scary. Yeah, we saw last game the... Uh, it deal, I believe, eight damage off activations. An amusing element of Krempel's deck here is he has this blue splash on a ton of blue sources, but if he gets okay. red white online and transforms Path of Metal, the backside actually taps for mana of any color. Okay. So oh, yeah, the, it fixes his blue mana. In the matchups where you want negate, that's kind of nice. Lightning Strike will take care of Whirler Virtuoso. And Path of Metal, I like this, shoots down the Thopter. 
Yeah, that's just a card he wants that to cast was anyway. Nice. Wow. That was nice. That lines up really well against Virtuoso. Yeah, swing, Ragavan, transform. Ooh, five damage to Candio at 11. Craig still owns the board and now has a Metzali. Really good spot for Crimples here. And uh, another Virtuoso for DeCandio, but no fourth land. You know, once again, he'll be missing a land drop. And these blockers matter a lot less now that Crimples just has this form of reach that he can activate every turn. Yeah, another Virtuoso for Brennan, but this is going to be a problem. A swing with Ragavan. will come in. He doesn't want to put the 2 2 in. So Ragavan's blocked by the Thopter. Brennan takes one. But the Metzali's online. Brandon's hand just flooding up with high drops. You see Vraska's Contempt, Glorybringer, Scarab God, all, high, all resting there. Mm -hmm. He's got a Harness Lightning, maybe even two, but that's not the problem. This land is putting him to eight. He's on a strict four-turn clock, if right. not quicker. Some of these control decks, particularly the blue-black build with no third color splashed, play copies of Field of Ruin. That can be an answer. Okay, yeah, that could work, but he it's doesn't have them, to right? to make work in the Grixis deck. Yeah, he doesn't have any. Okay, does he have a way to shut it off at all? Like Sorceress Spyglass? I don't believe he has anything of that nature. Okay. He doesn't look like it. So four turns, a hard four turns. Yes. I don't know. That he, maybe he can gain life. He could, like, start Rusk's contempting lots of things. That could work. Right. Craig goes to combat. Brennan harnesses some lightning to shoot down Carry Zev. Well, that's the other thing about this Metzali. The ways that Decandio can turn the corner quickly is just a bunch of large creatures, and Krempels can just play defense with that and use the white mode. Krempels just says go. So he's actually running out of damage sources, but another glory bringer drawn for Decandio. He's, he maybe could have clawed his way back in, but each draw is counting so much. Can't cast that one. No, he'll swing with the Thopter. Says go, shot down to six. Looks like Krimples has picked up a glory bringer of his own. The game day promo, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely has on Crop Crasher. That one doesn't line up great against Pearl Virtuoso. <laughs> He'll pass. And nothing's better than just getting a free two damage. No, I mean, this is already, the Metzali's already done four damage. Path of Metal is really good in this deck, is what I've been learning from these games. Yes. Harness Lightning will shoot down the rigging runner. Yeah, Craig checks. He's, he's fine with that. Yeah, that's just the entire reason that this deck plays white. Uh, Brennan makes another Thopter. He actually looks like Brennan didn't kill the Ricking Runner. He actually just made a Thopter. Draws Rekindling Phoenix. He, he's just, just drawing things he can't cast. He'll swing in for two, but now shot down to four. This is unlikely to matter. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's doing everything he can. Yeah. So Craig will say go. If Brennan misses a land drop again, we're done. Yes. He's got Vraska's Contempt, so if he hits a land drop, he has one turn that he has bought himself. Fanatical Firebrand's the cast from Kremples. He'll pass. And Brennan, draw. Does he finally hit his land? He does not. It's another Rekindling Phoenix. He's going to get shot on end step, and then one more time extends the hand. So match number one is complete. It is Craig Kremples, a 2-0 winner over Brennan DeCandio. I like the look of this Jeskai Mono Red deck. Path of Metal, quite the card there. A lot of free damage after that Metzali. Looks like we're going to move over to the Legacy table, because I don't see Caleb Durward and Brennan McCarley playing any more Magic. We'll confirm that that match is done as well. But this is Joe Brennan and Tannen Grace, where we're going to go next. So Joe Brennan playing Miracles. Tannen Grace playing Grixis Delver. Now, historically, I liked Miracles against Delver decks. Or certainly, there's a ton of play to the matchup, but that was back when Sensei's Divining Top was around. Top was really the best card in the matchup for the Miracles player. Probably on either side, actually. Just the best card in the matchup. Yeah, so it's going to come down to this one. Tannen has one game one. He has a true name nemesis in play, three lands. On Joe Brennan's side, he's got four lands, all basics. All of his colors set up. It's really the best four basics he could have. He's got Search for Ascanta going. Six cards in the graveyard. Just figured that might flip soon. And here is a Kataxian Probe. It is Swords to Plowshares. 
entreats the angels and unexpectedly absent. So some uncastables here because of Joe's mana. Yes. Entreat the angels, generally difficult to cast from your hand, but even right. if you found a brainstorm, you'd have to find another white source as just basic planes producing white right now. And Tannen did find a red blast off of that probe, so he, he might seem to shoot off that search for us canto right now. Yeah, it's reasonable that would be able to flip on the following turn. Yeah. And it looks like he has fetch land, dual land, no wasteland available to answer as to the sunken rune. So he'll pass. Search for us can't going to mill a Jason transform. And Tan says, wait, wait, stop. No, that's fine. It transforms. So he doesn't, he's choosing not to fight over that one. I suppose there's not a huge concern over... Yeah, he had the wasteland for it. I think that's why. God, must have left that there with that ponder. Yeah, so Joe will activate. Now, what's holding Brennan up right now is he doesn't have second white. Yes. Though he does need something that can actually cleanly answer true name nemesis. Yeah, you see a terminus there is what he got. Now, there's going to be some issues. Tannen has two force of wills in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he's got a blast to protect his Force of Wills, so I don't know that it's going to take a lot of work for Joe to resolve something like that card. Right. Yeah, Joe has five mana, so he needs to find White Source off the top if he wants to cast Terminus in the first place. Resolving it, whole different issue. Yeah. Draws a basic. I think it's an island, though. Pretty sure it's island. Yeah, consult with the teammates here. Tannen has made an interesting decision. He could have made another land drop that turn. In theory, if he gets up to five lands, he gets our card. That gives him an advantage. He can hard cast the Force of Wills. Instead, he's not doing it. He's holding on to them in case he finds a brainstorm so that he can have extra card advantage. Yeah, once you're pitching Force of Will to Force of Will, it's not a significant cost because you have to throw something away. You don't need to Force okay. of Will twice. The second one's just a blank text on a blue card. Right. And until you get to six mana, the Red Blast is not an extra card if you want to hard cast the Force of Will. At this point, he picked up a third land, so it does okay. make sense to okay. get that one out there. Brennan down to nine. S draws, so he has, yeah, he has, looks like, now he's got three islands, a volcanic island, a mountain, and a single plains. His mana's just not working out. Still has a couple turns left, so he makes Relic of Progenitus. He's gonna crack it, it looks like, to draw. Draw a card. Both players' graveyards are gone, but that's that's no hurt to Tan, and he's just we're trying to ride out this true name nemesis. Brennan will cast Portent, targeting himself. Tan has an opportunity to blast here. Not a great or exciting target from Elemental Blast, especially because that just leaves a Tannen with Force of Will. If it was Brainstorm, there's a reasonable argument to fire off the Red Blast, especially because you know the Entreat's already there. Brennan could conceivably turn this around and win with the Angels. But just drawing one extra card, not huge. And it's, how about this? It's a Miracle Terminus. All right, immediately that's going to get the Force of Will from Tannen. And this is actually, he was going to make land five. So I want to go back to where you kind of thought about this being punished versus not punished, where he, he skipped the land drop intentionally. He would have another Force in his hand if he'd made that land drop. Yeah, so it's still a question of whether or not he has the opportunity to convert yeah. a second Force. If it was something that happens on Brennan's turn anyway, then Tannen wouldn't have Force of Will up again. I suppose he could pitch this Delver Secret he just drew to it. Yeah. And he'll pass. But Joe, Joe's down to six. He needs another answer to true name, but this next one might work. Cracks the fetch land down to five. He is looking for one of two remaining copies of Terminus or Council's Judgment. He's just going to cast this other Terminus from his hand, and it resolves. And now Tannen has Delver yeah. as a threat in his hand, but Brennan is flush with answers to that. He yeah. already knows about Swords of Plowshares. Unexpectedly absent. Yeah, he got that second white source, so here's Delver's secrets, but that's not going to play. Yeah. As soon as Joe finds a Brainstorm, he also has an Entreat in hand, but how about he'll just Miracle the other Entreat? Fine by me. He's only got two white sources, so if he casts it for Miracle, he is taking down all his removal. Does it matter? No. The Angels just get in front of the Delver. That's totally Do acceptable. You respect yeah, I mean, the issue is if he Miracles it, he's losing to a Force. He could not Miracle it and then just have Force and Unexpected. 
Yeah, Tannen just pitched force to force. I guess he didn't counter the Terminus, which is a big yeah. sign Tannen doesn't have it. Right. If you hang out and don't cast this, that means you're not doing anything proactive for a little bit of time. And in that time, Tannen could double lightning bolt you. Maybe play around one day, just make four angels here instead of five. I don't even know. Maybe not any. The, the, the Terminus was cast on seven think, mana. Yeah, I think making four is a good number because four is lethal. Yes. And there aren't really removal spells that change that. Yes. And if Joe turns this one around, we're going to be headed to a big deciding game three. You want to pay some mind to spell pierce. It could conceivably be a card in Tannen's hand. Well, he would have had to just drawn it. He didn't right. spell pierce the Terminus. Yeah, yeah, but still, it could be there. Yeah, if you respect spell pierce, you're giving Tannen an extra turn, though, right? Because you're only making 12 power? Yes. I like this. He respects just days. He makes four angels. Because he cast Terminus on seven mana and not six mana last turn, it's conceivable that Tannen has had a days in his hand for a while. Mm -hmm. So you're not just playing on a top deck, you're playing on more, you yeah, know? Yeah, and the fifth angel just doesn't matter. Right. So here's four, four, four flying angels. He'll pass. Back to Tan. He's got a draw step to work with. Just about one. It's going to flip. Let's see if he cares. He's thinking about just not showing. Okay, Surgical Extraction will flip it. I crack fetch then. He doesn't want to draw that. No. He wants to draw a Brainstorm, and he wants it to find two Lightning Bolts. Yeah, I mean, he already knows right now that Brennan can unexpectedly absent the Flying Blocker and swing Lethal. Yep. So, got to respect that. He needs a something. Do you think all four Lightning Bolts are still in the deck in this matchup? It's very likely that he has trimmed them. Drought's return. He had one Bolt in hand, so apparently he wasn't trying to double Lightning Bolt. He was trying to single Lightning Bolt. Um, but I don't believe he has it. He's going to make True Name Nemesis say go. This puts some pressure on Joe. Joe actually has to all in here. He has to cast on Expect the Absent and swing lethal. He can try to trick Joe into not making that play. Yeah, the thing about True Name Nemesis, though, is it doesn't incentivize trying to block. Yeah. As it cannot be blocked. Unexpectedly Absent, the, the Insectile Aberration. That's the only flying blocker. Top of the deck. Joe Brennan, do it. Turn him all sideways. There you go. That's lethal. We're going to game number three. So, a big comeback could be brewing here for a while. It looked like Joe Brennan was not going to get it, but he stabilizes at five and turns it around. We are going to take a short break here. When we be back, it'll be the deciding game of the round of Brennan versus Grace.
All right, so players playing here for game three. Looks like. Game, game already underway here as the 17 minutes in the round. So Sir Ponder and Portent cast on the first two turns. Portent, of course, the, the slower version of Ponder, but more or less the same card. Tana will play turn two, Young Pyromancer. As we go back over here for Joe Brennan. Portent a card kind of back on an upswing. Now yeah. that Sensei's Divining Top is banned. Yeah, you just have so... I, and there is some neat interaction. First of all, you just want all the cantrips possible. But the idea that it draws a card on your opponent's turn actually gives it some favorable interactions with cards like Terminus. Yep. yep. When you draw on your opponent's upkeep, your miracle will be the first card you have drawn that turn. So he'll cast Ponder, keeps the top three, and draws. You go back over to Tannen. The Pyromancer was hit by Swords to Plowshares. We'll see if Tannen can make another threat. He was hoping, you see Cabal Therapy in his hand, to really one-two punch his opponent with Therapy and Pyromancer. There's some argument to wait, but the thing about Legacy is your third mana, not super where you want to be with the Delver decks. You kind of just want to run out the Young Pyromancer over the best, in particular if you just have another threat. Well, here's True Name Nemesis, and we saw last game it swing in for 15 damage, so... That's on the board now for Tannen. See what Joe can do about it. His answers, we saw the three copies of Terminus, a one Council's Judgment. That is going to be it for ways to get rid of this card. No Supreme Verdicts. So Predict from Joe, of course, that one not really... Not or name is a little deceptive here. He already knows what it is. And he'll cast a port and targeting himself. So plenty of card filtering. He's looking for an answer to that true name. He has a bit of time to find it, but he will need to find it. Right. And also there's no real sources of life gain in the deck. So if he does find an answer, but he gets too low, as we saw last game, there are some lightning bolt draws that Tannen is is live to. Right. It's unlikely that without answering the true nemesis that Brennan will be able to race. It would involve and treat the angels. Resol resolving that when you're under pressure can be difficult. We see Tannen resolving a brainstorm here. He actually put two, puts two of three lands back. And there is another young Pyromancer in Tannen's hand here. The team's discussing whether or not they want to go for it. It would combine well with that Cabal Therapy. It does make you more vulnerable if Brennan does produce that Terminus, though. Then you're just kind of throwing everything under the battlefield and hoping for the best. It can be really difficult to reset once you've been swept. A young Pyromancer from Tannen. And now that he has the Pyromancer in play, he can convert that therapy twice. This is real good. Now, of course, Brennan's still trying to find the answer on the top of his deck because he's playing all these Ponders. So if the Terminus is there, he's still in a bit of trouble. And this is what I like. He's using Surgical Extraction main phase to shuffle up Joe's deck. A veritable Gataxian probe as well. Yeah. Gets to see what to name. Oh, that's really good. Gets rid of, it looks like, Swords to Plowshares. So sees the hand. Jace, Pyroblast, or make that Red Elemental Blast. Both. Yeah, both. <laughs> Terminus, Unexpectedly Absent, and Flooded Strand. This hand needs a Brainstorm to work. Technically, Jace is a Brainstorm. That's not going to be in Brennan's hand for very long. I like the teamwork there. Tannen started shuffling Brennan's deck. Caleb Durward points out Brennan shuffles his own deck. Now they're talking about what exactly they want to therapy away. So because of the young Pyromancer, Tannen gets access to two therapies on the cheap. Elemental token for now. 
All right, gets rid of the Terminus, gets rid of Flashes of Back, gets rid of the Jace, leaves him with two Blasts and an unexpectedly absent and a fresh shuffled deck. A lot of good things here for Tan, and he's going to try to convert, hoping that Joe can't find another Terminus in time. Yeah, the holdings here, very beatable. So the other thought, Tanner could have had another way to play this that I was interested about. He could have therapied first. If he'd hit Terminus and just blind named Terminus, he would have had the opportunity to surgical away the Terminus. Yes. Joe going to go for Ponder. I imagine that this line was slightly influenced by the fact that uh, he reasonably believed that there was another Swords in Brennan's hand. Okay. There wasn't another target available for it. It's a four of in the deck. You see Joe showing teammates that he's found Council's Judgment. So he, he's going to have to get that one. He'll fetch and cast it. That takes care of True Name Nemesis. It, it's one of his few answers left for the 3-1. Now let's find a way to clean up these Pyromancer tokens, and the Pyromancer are still on the board. Right. Tannen, I believe, does not have a daze here. Does not. The True Name's exiled. And Joe's still at 16, so a lot of play left. Back over to Tan, and he'll swing in for four. Drops Joe to 12. Force of Will and Brainstorm in hand. He'll go ahead and cast a Brainstorm. Why not get another Elemental? Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because he has a Pyromancer. It makes sense to yeah. be aggressive with the Brainstorm. Looks like Delver, Brainstorm, one other. I like keeping the Delver in hand Ooh. to pitch to the Force of Will. He also has Cabal Therapy. You know the three cards in Brennan's hand, and none of them are very good. Are they worth taking anyway or, or not? You kind of want to hit Pyroblast and Real Elemental Blast, actually, if you're ever going to resolve that Force of Will. Yeah. So we could, we could see that one fired off this turn. Yeah, the third card's Unexpectedly Absent, which is okay. Yeah, that, that one you care much less about. It looks like they're going to go ahead and actually bury away the therapy. Maybe not. He's going to cast another Brainstorm, so we'll see. Okay. And this does make this a two-turn clock. It forces yeah. the Unexpectedly Absent, and okay. he can actually just cast the Therapy this turn, so just that won't be it. an option. Yeah, and that actually puts Joe on one out. Yeah, that means that Joe has to find Terminus right now or Portent into it. You see Caleb Durward, Brennan DeCandio weighing in here with their teammate, hoping that they can ride this legacy match to the round win. Yeah, I like what they're doing here. Another ponder, I believe, in the top cards as well. Not sure how much more of that Tannen needs. No, at, at this point, he has the two-turn clock. Yeah, even with a bonus damage, if he wants to cast the therapy. If you cast, like, Ponder Therapy, you have a two-turn clock with elemental tokens alone, oh. which is interesting. And Terminus is off the top. Oh, actually. Tannen is going to force pitching blue card here. And the, wait, there's no red mana for right. Joe. That Flooded Strand did not find a red source. Oh, wow. Tannen's going to untap here. He can swing for seven, Joe to five. Says go. Now, Joe, has, he has to Miracle again. He, there's just one left in the deck. It would be a huge draw. His hand's going to get torn up, too. Here's Cabal Therapy. Takes the Unexpectedly Absent. I don't even know if I bother flashing it back. Yeah, why not? It's pretty take free. A, take a Blast. Take the Pyroblast. Pick one. Take the All Foil right. one. All right, Joe, here's your draw. Draw another Terminus. That's not that, a he didn't. He didn't reveal it. Ponder. Ponder so is also not a Terminus. He could ponder into Portent into Terminus. Correct. It's a lot harder once you shuffle. Yeah, he has to draw Portent here, and then when his top three cards has to have a Terminus in it, and then he's okay. That might be the only out he has now. Pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's not Even good. Even just, just tapping this low, there's not really cards Portent, in the format. It's a mountain. That's not going to do it. So it is the team of Tan and Grace, Caleb Durward, and Brennan DeCandio. They are your winners. A a real, whew, right down to the end, wire at the end there. But they improved to 5-0. and